Well, we've been using IBM now for quite some time and I never thought we, well I didn't even know what IBM was actually in the early days, but uh, um, we've been very content using it. But for anyone that is perhaps uh, a little bit hesitant about IBM, I want to take you back to when I was a boy actually. Uh, I remember uh, growers around me talking about uh, how you can't bring tractors onto the land because they pack the ground hard and you can't grow crops anymore. It was a real hassle. And uh, look at us today, you know, we're still using horses. I don't see any around. So uh, it was much the same with, uh, with the chemicals. Um, in the early 50s, chemicals were introduced and we started to use them and they were great. They did all sorts of wonderful things. They, they cleaned their crops up and then later they even started to um, uh, develop chemicals for um, selective weed control and that was really beautiful. Uh, but what I have experienced over the years is, and it's probably over a period of 40 years, that as we were using chemicals, the chemicals we were using got stronger and stronger and more and more dangerous uh, to the point where we were very concerned about health. And especially when the boys came in on it and Darren was doing the spraying, uh, we were very concerned about health. What made us actually go to IPM, I think, was first of all a trip to Holland where I saw IPM used very successfully in glass houses, but also outside. One place they were using it outside and that really made my ears prick a bit. When I came back here in the early 2000s, I think, I heard that Tom Schroes was using IPM and uh, that again interests us a lot. Then the next thing that happened is we got a problem in our leek crop. We got two, what was it? Two, two spotted two mite. Spotted mite. Yeah. yeah, the two spotted mite was really taking over and uh, Darren sprayed whatever he could but it didn't seem to control it at all. So uh, it's from there on that uh, Darren made some moves. Darren, maybe you have to go on on that. Yeah, and there, um, that's for you. Yeah, I was hitting uh, the two spotted mite with um, whatever was on the shelf and spending more money and spraying more dangerous chemicals and thinking, oh my god, how am I going to control this? And yeah, when we heard about um, IPM, um, I thought it would be a good option too because I got sick of using dangerous chemicals. And uh, that's when um, I spoke to Paul and he came down and told me to stop spraying. And I got a hell of a shock and I thought, oh, well, I'll see how it goes. And he showed me uh, the um, Persimilis, a little uh, predatory mite that was uh, controlling the um, the uh, two spotted mite. So uh, I stopped spraying and within I think it was four weeks the two spotted mite disappeared, it was gone. And since then I haven't uh, put any insecticide out on the leaks at all. So that's, years, is that? that's been uh, well 2008 so you're looking at nearly eight years, yeah. So um, and, and, I mean fruit, fruits are always a problem too in uh, leaks and people say well you've got to watch out for the fruits, they're going to wipe your crop out so I had a stringent program of uh, spraying uh, uh, fruits every uh, fortnight and um, yeah I, I've never had a build up of fruits <laughs> since then so there's so many predators, uh, predatory uh, fruits out there and, and even mites that feed on fruits so uh, it, um, yeah it, um, we're looking after them and it's keeping things under control so um, but it was uh, it was then when um, <coughs> the lettuce over came out in um, 2005 I think it was we uh, we were doing IPM. We'd been doing it then for um, you know, nearly five years, and we didn't want to change. We thought everybody else was going to Confidor drenching, and then I thought, oh, look, <laughs> it's been working. IPM's been working well for us, so we decided to um, stick with IPM, and um, we monitored regularly, and uh, we um, no, nothing has been Confidor drenched, and um, I use a chest spray early stages if um, we see. Um, signs of aphids and um, look now up to 2008 uh, you know, three years later I've never had a bad out outbreak at all I mean there's aphids around yes but um, we're keeping them under check and it hasn't been a problem so uh, um, what we're doing we're not only um, controlling the lettuce aphid we're looking after all the predators that uh, feed on Heliothus which is a problem and the thrips uh, which people talk about are a problem. I mean, Western flower thrip are meant to be a problem with the, um, the tomato spotted wolf virus. And, I mean, yeah, we don't get any outbreaks here on the farm because um, we've got so many predators everywhere. So uh, we're happy with it, we're confident with it, but 
I know that most growers won't change unless they have a personal um, tragedy like we did, you know, with a two-spotted mite or or if something else becomes resistant to confidor, then you might um, want to look at another alternative. So it's everyone's own personal choice. Um, I'm a happier and healthier person myself. I, uh, you know, my chemical shed, I mean, I've, overall it's, it's you know, BTs and, 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 and you know, um, vi viruses and so forth, all biological sort of controls from my insecticides. And um, it's very rare that I might have to get out something to a little bit heavier. It's, um, look, I've, we've had no major outbreaks and because we're, we're out there monitoring regularly, um, we're able to see if, if something does fly in, we can get on top of it uh, quick smart and, um, and start off with a softer option. So, um, so you, you're growing cos lettuce only, or no iceberg lettuce? No iceberg lettuce, just, just the cos lettuce. And how, how much do you plant each week or at the moment? Well, we're increasing all the time. Uh, I know we've got plantings of uh, 150,000 coming up soon per week. and um, um, But through this year it's been you know, around 70,000 plants a week. and. Um, we rotate our paddock. We've got, uh, you know, we grow parsnips and leeks and, and brassica crops, and we rotate uh, regularly around the farm. Uh, we've got native tree strips everywhere, and and yeah, that that houses a, a few little insects here and there. And um, just just by the rotation, you never you don't get a build up of any pest anywhere, and um, yeah, diseases too. It's it's good for diseases. So um, yeah, the, the the experience that you've had is very similar in uh, other crops. Uh, iceberg lettuce has been grown exactly the same way in Werribee, Tasmania, New South Wales. So I think this approach that you've got working here is applicable to uh, to any lettuce grower really that, that wants to give it a try. Yeah.